said, uh, hello everyone. As we said, this session is about computer vision dog breed classification with convolutional neural networks, TensorFlow, and Kubeflow. I'm Dorothea Cagliora. I'm a software engineer at Aricto. And yeah. So, what you'll see in this session. Uh, today, we will build a Jupyter notebook that leverages the combined powers of Kubeflow, TensorFlow, uh, CNNs, and transfer learning in order to see how accurately we can predict the breed of a dog. Then, we will use Gale to run this Jupyter notebook as a Kubeflow pipeline. Uh, Kubeflow is the machine learning platform we're going to use. For those who are not familiar with it, Kubeflow is an open source project that makes the deployments of machine learning workflows on Kubernetes simple, portable, and scalable. Let's see how Kubeflow is used in the machine learning process. This is a high-level overview of the machine learning process a machine learning engineer would follow. The process begins with experimenting with machine learning uh, tools and frameworks, such as Pytors or TensorFlow that we're going to use today, to perform machine learning tasks. Then Kubeflow encapsulates these applications and services to run those machine learning tools on top of Kubernetes clusters. Lastly, Kubernetes runs on-prem or any other cloud. Now let's have a closer look of the machine learning workflow as a data scientist would experience it. Data science begins with identifying the problem and collecting and analyzing the data. Then the data scientist has to choose a machine learning algorithm and code their models. Subsequently, they experiment with data and model training. After they build a good enough model, they can optimize it with hyperparameter tuning. And of course, in the very end, they can serve the best model uh, that produced the best result. As we see, Kubeflow provides various components that implement all the aforementioned stages. In this talk, we will focus on Jupyter Notebooks, Kale, and Kubeflow pipelines. So, can, how can someone interact with Kubeflow? Let's have a closer look in some key components for this session. Here, you can see the Kubeflow Central Dashboard. It is a graphical user interface to manage notebooks, volumes, snapshots, and other various components. Kubeflow also has its own APIs and SDKs that you can interact with. One of them is the Pipelines SDK, which we will see in the next slides. We also saw that Kubeflow integrates with Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, these notebooks run as containers inside the Kubernetes pod and enable users to run web-based development environments inside the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, they also expose a Jupyter Lab ID to the user's browser used for interactive data science computations. Lastly, they have persistent volumes attached to them which store installed libraries and data plus enable snapshotting and reproducibility. Another basic component of Kubeflow is Kubeflow pipelines, as we said. Here is how the Kubeflow pipelines interface looks like. Kubeflow pipelines is a platform for building and deploying portable, scalable ML workflows, and it, cons and, and, and it consists of a UI, as you see in this slide, for managing training experiments, jobs, and runs, a stable SDK for creating pipelines and components, and lastly, an engine for scheduling multi-step machine learning workflows. Uh, we also saw that Kubeflow integrates with Kale. So what is Kale? Um, Kale simplifies the use of Kubeflow, giving data scientists the tools they need to orchestrate end-to-end -end machine learning workflows. Let's talk more about its main features. Kale offers a UI in the form of a JupyterLab extension, as you see in this slide. Uh, with Kale, you can enable it and annotate cells within Jupyter Notebooks in order to define the pipeline steps perform hyperparameter tuning, uh, use a GPU, and track metrics. Kale also provides APIs that enable users to create pipeline components and KFP DSL, resolve the dependencies, inject data objects into each step, 
uh, deploy the data science pipeline, and also serve models. Uh, we see how Kale converts Jupyter Notebooks into pipelines, but we haven't yet addressed the importance of pipelines in the machine learning workflow. Well, if you really think about it, when working in a Jupyter Notebook, you already follow a workflow that looks like a pipeline. Cells can be viewed as separate steps that depend on each other. Pipelines follow the same logic. They consist of clearly defined steps that can even run in parallel as isolated code execution units. This enables hyperparameter tuning of a notebook and its steps. Also, it becomes very easy when running pipelines in the Kubeflow pipelines to apply data versioning and reproducibility to these independent steps. The various cells of your notebook that become independent steps <clears throat> might have different requirements. For example, the training of a deep learning model might need a GPU, whereas another cell may not. All the above are feasible with Kale and ROC. So, let's talk about how Kale and ROC can dramatically simplify the workflow of building a Qflow pipeline. <clears throat> Here is the machine learning development process without these components. As you can see, um, you need to follow various steps. First, you need to write your machine learning code, then create Docker images, write the DSL KFP code, compile it, then upload the, KFP pil the pipeline to KFP, and lastly, run the pipeline. So what happens if you make a mistake and you need to amend your machine learning code? You would have to start from creating Docker images again with your new code and follow uh, the next steps as you see here. Every time you make a mistake. When you introduce scale and rock, this procedure um, is simplified to three steps. You will write your machine learning code, you will tag your notebook cells with Kale, and run the pipeline with a click of a button. If you make a mistake, this time you just edit your notebook. So this reduces the iteration time by 70%. Uh, today, uh, since we have introduced all the basic components, we will talk about Kubeflow as a service. We will use Kubeflow as a service to run our DocBrid demo. Kubeflow as a service is the fastest way to deploy Kubeflow. Here you can see the central dashboard. You can get started with Kubeflow in minutes with just a click of a button, like I'm going to show you now. So. Um, give me a second. Where is it? No, I can't. You can help me. Go to the screen. Now you can. Okay, thanks. Uh, so. We're going to open a new window and type this URL, qflow.aricto.com. You can sign up here with your credentials and create a new account. I have already an account. So is this email? Let me type my password. Oh, it's OK. I can change it later. <laughs> I know. OK. So here's the central dashboard uh, that you saw earlier. Uh, I have already a deployment, but if you click here, you can create a new Kubeflow deployment just by clicking this button. Uh, this procedure would take under 30 minutes. We can click Create. You can also see a video of uh, how you can use Kubeflow as you're waiting. 
So this is creating, uh, and we can view uh, the ready deployment. Here's the credentials. We have a username and a password. We can copy our password and go to this URL. We will use user as the username and this password in order to log in. And here you can see the Qflow Central dashboard that we saw before with the various components. For example, we can go to pipelines, and you can see some ready pipelines uh, that we have prepared. Um, we can go over to the slides. And now I'm going to hand it over to Constantinos to show you the demo. Uh, one, two, one, two. Yeah. So, hello, everybody. I'm Constantinos Andriopoulos. I'm a software engineer at Arito along with Dorothea. And you can call me Costis, you know, later in the questions. It's much easier. So, um, Dorothea showed how we can easily create a Kubeflow as a service instance and access Kubeflow really easily. So, in this part of the presentation, we are going to run a demo for you. We have prepared a Jupyter notebook, we are going to convert it into a pipeline. And you'll see how we will use Kubeflow as a service to do that. So let's jump right in and talk uh, specifics about the example itself. So um, as uh, the title says, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the dog breed classification uh, problem. It's based on a really famous Udacity project. Uh, some of you may know it. And uh, the purpose, as the name suggests, is to classify the images of dogs according to their breed. So it accepts any user-defined uh, input image, and you can easily you know, go ahead and take a picture of your dog, upload it, and use our trained models and get a prediction of your dog breed back. So for the purpose of the demo, we are going to use CNNs, convolutional neural networks, and um, transfer learning. So let's jump right in and talk a bit about uh, this part of machine learning. So, um, as I said, uh, convolutional neural networks uh, is the framework, the, the type of uh, deep networks that we are going to use, and they are a huge class of artificial neural networks, and they have infinite applications in uh, image classification and image analysis. So, an interesting feature about CNNs is that uh, their architecture consists of, let's say, windows that are, uh, in a way, sliding across the image, and they detect different types of uh, uh, interesting features in that image, such as corners, such as edges. So that leads them to understand uh, the contents of the image, like items that are contained in the image, or dogs, in our case. Um, and the uh, framework that we are going to use in order to implement all this in this demo is TensorFlow. I'm sure you know TensorFlow. Um, we chose it because, well, of course, it's open source. It has an infinite amount of applications. Um, it's excellent for training and inference of uh, deep neural networks. And it is also natively supported in Kubeflow. So um, the first pre-trained CNN that we are going to use is called ResNet 50. And as the name suggests, it's 50 layers deep. It's trained on uh, ImageNet. It has over a million uh, different images and about a 1,000 categories of different objects contained in these images, such as keyboard, mouse, pencil, and many animals, such as dogs. So the next one that we are going to use is called VGG16. Uh, as the name suggests, again, it's 16 layers deep. and it's a CNN with uh, infinite applications in image analysis. Um, it's also used in the ImageNet Visual Database project. And um, well, as you probably guessed, it's really, really popular. So let's jump in the sections of the notebook that we are going to use for this demo. Uh, in the beginning, as any data scientist, we are going to do a couple of downloads, imports, define some pipeline parameters, because this notebook is going to turn into a pipeline uh, in the end. We are going to load our data in memory, and then 
we are going to create three different uh, types of uh, CNNs. The first one we will build with uh, our own bare hands using TensorFlow. The other two are pre-trained, so we are, we are going to use transfer learning on top of them in order to use them in our specific problem in dog reclassification. Then we are going to test them and see a couple of visualizations in order to see where we're at. Okay? So, uh, we can now jump in the demo. Let me change the screen here. Let's go here. Okay, so as, you, as Dorothea showed you, we have a instance ready to use. So we're going to go this way. We are going to copy our password and we are going to connect to it, right? So let me move that a bit in order to be easier. So as you can see, we have a uh, Kubeflow dashboard here. Uh, the ones that we saw in the slides. Let's go ahead and create a new notebook server in order to run our examples. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new notebook. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it KubeCon. All right. So as you've seen, I have lots of <laughs> other KubeCon instances here. Um, we are going to add a couple of more gigabytes of volume, let's say 15, and I think we're ready. We can click launch. And uh, essentially what we are doing now is we are creating a notebook server that runs a JupyterLab Jupiter image, but this image uh, not only exposes a JupyterLab UI, but it also uh, it, this JupyterLab UI is extended by Kale's lab extension. So we are going to see how Kale goes over the JupyterLab UI and gives you the opportunity to create a whole bunch of different uh, annotations in order to translate cells into actual pipeline steps. So we are connecting to it. You see the JupyterLab UI pop up? Yeah. So this is empty. We need to download our uh, notebook. So let's get the terminal. Our uh, notebook is hosted in our uh, GitHub organization page. It's under the examples repository. So I'm going to go ahead and clone it without seeing, actually. Let's see how that goes. It goes OK? Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. oh, yeah, I forgot clone. Thank you. Well, you just that, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the help also. So if we refresh here, we can see that it has a new examples uh, folder, the file viewer here. We are going to go ahead and pick the dog breed one. And we need this, do this notebook. So. Um, we have pre prepared this for you. Let me go ahead and download this so that we don't do that later on. Um, and um, we need to install also a couple of requirements. So what I downloaded there is the data sets and some of the pre-trained features uh, about the models that we are going to, to use uh, uh, to classify dogs, the ResNet 50 and the VGG 16 one that we said before. So let's go ahead and take a look at the notebook, okay? And see here that we have a new icon on the left, it's called Kale, and we can hit Enable, and you see the difference in the UI. Now, uh, Kale gives you the opportunity, as I said before, to annotate uh, notebook cells and uh, define them as pipeline steps or pipeline parameters that you can tune each time you run a new pipeline. Um, also, you have import cells, and you have a whole bunch of different cells, actually. So let's go ahead and see, now that the notebook is annotated, um, let's go ahead and see how, you know, what each cell does. So essentially, uh, in this step, we load our data set. This is not that important. We can go ahead and see 
what we do with our models. So you can see here that we are annotating a, a cell as a CNN from scratch. I mean, uh, this is the cell that uh, defines our uh, newly created um, uh, CNN model. And you'll see that we are using uh, the sequential API by uh, TensorFlow in order to create it. It's not a very deep model, so don't expect really fascinating results. So we go ahead then and compile it, we train it, and then we do uh, a couple of tests. We uh, report uh, test accuracy, and also we'll uh, you know, create a couple of visualizations for you to see. So in another step, uh, or in another uh, bunch of steps that are all annotated in, with the same annotation, you can see that we are using the VDG16 model. And essentially, what we are doing is that we are adding a, uh, another layer in the end of the model. Um, and this uh, layer uh, is not a pre-trained layer, as the rest of the model is. We are going to use this layer in order to do classification on top of our specific data set, right? the dogbit data set. So we compile the model, we train it, and the same thing, we do a couple of tests. Um, and uh, a couple of visualizations and predictions. The third model, and the last one, is uh, the ResNet 50 model. We do exactly the same thing as we did with uh, VGG16. And, uh, well, I think that these are the important parts of the mode book. We can go back and see how the downloads are going. Okay, yeah, we have a couple of uh, uh, installations painting. This take like uh, like a minute. So essentially what we're going to do now, now that we have set up our environment, uh, we are installing everything and we uh, have downloaded our data set, we have loaded uh, uh, our models, etc. Now we are going to hit uh, compile and run. And when we do that, Kale will uh, automatically validate the notebook, see if there's any missing dependencies there, um, between the steps, and it, was, it is going to take a snapshot of the volume, and this snapshot is essentially a, a picture of the volume, let's say, that we can reproduce whenever we want, and Kale is going to uh, create a new PVC out of that snapshot, and this PVC will find its way in each and every step of the pipeline that's going to be created. So this way we persist all of our user environment to the pipelines that we are going to create. So it seems like it's working. We can go ahead and view it. And you'll see the execution graph that KFP exposes. It's in early stage. The first step is creating a volume. So because this is going to take a bit of time, we can actually show you. Oh, see? Next step. Uh, we can actually show you a pipeline that we ran, well, yesterday. And um, you can see here how these three uh, steps are the ones that we use to create our model and train it. And you see how they run in parallel, but they somehow depend on the same step, on the previous step. You see you know, all the dependencies um, using the arrows. So let's go ahead and click you know, in ResNet and go in the Visualizations tab. And you'll see that we have this HTML window here. So as you can see, the test accuracy of this model is 82% over our test data set. And we have uh, shown, we have uh, uh, decided to show, to, to show a visualization of a, a specific part of the data set, this dog. This is a uh, Dalmatian, this is the ground truth, and this is what the model predicted. So we see really, really good results early on. Uh, the next model that we are going to see is the VGG16. Again, visualizations tab. You can see a whole bunch of visualizations that uh, you can do. Uh, not a good, uh, uh, not uh, that good of an accuracy. It's 72 percent. But again, it predicted correctly the specific uh, Dalmatian dog. We can do the same thing for our CNN from scratch. And we have some. Uh, things here too, if we go and scroll right back like this. You'll see that test accuracy is not that good at this point. 
I mean, uh, we expected that it's like a really, really uh, not that deep layer, so it cannot be compared to ResNet and uh, the other two layers. Um, so yeah, this is it from the demo. We can actually jump in to the slides. And, uh, you know, I want to end this by talking a bit about uh, our community. Um, I would like to conclude by saying that in Aricto we are we're really really passionate open source contributors. We have contributed to many to many components in Kubeflow. We've uh, contributed to the Jupyter management UI, um, to, to Kubeflow pipelines, to our own opinionated uh, uh, version of Kubeflow Mini KF, um, up to the to the Linux uh, kernel itself. So. A bit more about Kubeflow. Uh, Kubeflow, as you may know, is a great community made up with uh, uh, many, many big companies that are actively contributing. And uh, it is a community that is always, always trying to find new members, new contributors that are passionate users. So please feel free to, to get involved. And um, here you can find like a, a lot of pointers from our uh, GitHub organization to our Slack community. We are really, really happy to support you and to onboard you. So without further ado, I would like to say thank you. Here's a couple of pointers, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, do we have any questions? Can't see any hands up. Anybody have any questions? I, I have one question. So sure. I, I found out earlier today that we have quite a few dog lovers in the room. Yeah. Can, can these people, some of these people might have dogs that they need classifying. Can they drop an image into the Slack channel? Will you yes. classify for them? We can come back to that later on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, as we said, it's a public example. So if you just go ahead in our GitHub account, download it and run it, uh, okay. you can actually take a picture of your dog and see what the actual breed is. We'll do that later <laughs> on. Oh, so we do have a question. Okay. Uh, friend, congratulations on uh, the presentation. Uh, from on your uh, point of view, uh, is it possible to uh, predict a mixed breed, uh, something like a percentage of? Uh, yeah, yeah, of a, a combination yeah. of two or three breeds. You say, well, it actually depends on the data set that we used. I think that the data set that we used, although I have not seen all of the targets, but I think it's all. Uh, unique breeds. So if you create a data set uh, that has uh, different targets, you know, extends the one that we used and has a combination of others, and also provide pictures of these so that you can train your model, then sure. But I think this one doesn't it. We have another question. Oh, say, say on. Uh, about the Kale project. Yes. Uh, it looks very cool, but it looks a kind of deprecated project. It just reached 500 uh, stars in GitHub, and the last commit is like for the October last year. Yes, yes. So uh, what we showed you here is actually our um, our own uh, private version of Kale that comes with Kubeflow as a service. So it isn't very in sync with what you see in our upstream repo in GitHub. It has a whole bunch of new features, and it's you know it's in a really really updated stage than the one that you see in the open source. Any more questions? Jessica, do we have any questions in the Slack channel? Uh, no, and uh, so far no new dog pictures. So. No new dog <laughs> pictures. Okay, great stuff. Okay, thank you very much. We thank you. Round of applause. Thank you.